The story takes place in December 2007. The undefeated Ricky Hatton receives his first loss against Floyd Mayweather Jr. in the 10th round. Since this fight was for Floyd's 147 pound title, Hatton's title was not at stake. Hatton would immediately bounce back to defend the lineal junior welterweight title against contender Juan Lascano in May of 2008. After four back-to-back -back fights within a year and a half span, this would be Hatton's first fight back in the UK. Hatton was able to control the fight for the most part, but no new improvements to Hatton's game, including nothing done to improve his defense. Hatton would get hurt by Lascano in the 10th round. To be saved by the ref would pull Juan to the side for a foul rather than just being more vocal to him during a pivotal moment in the fight. Then seconds later, pull Hatton aside, further burning up even more time to have his shoe tied. What is he doing? I mean, he sent them back Hatton to their corner. To a slew corner. Hatton was in dire Some straits kind of an there, and they're tying a shoelace. They are tying the shoelace. No, that's, that's... Hatton would get the wide unanimous decision win, but he would drop longtime trainer Billy Graham. Since Hatton is under Golden Boy Promotions banner, and since Oscar De La Hoya was reunited with Mayweather Sr. in preparations for Steve Forbes earlier that month of May, as well as preparing for a potential rematch with Floyd Mayweather Jr. September of 2008. I can guarantee you one thing right now. I will beat him. I will. Yeah, will you guarantee when you're going to fight him? Uh, well, the date is not set in stone yet. There's nothing signed, but uh, with Floyd Sr. in my corner, I will get him. Mayweather will announce his retirement just a month later, and the rematch was put to rest right there. Oscar will later announce his next fight will be against newly crowned number one pound for pound fighter and lightweight champion Manny Pacquiao for December 2008. This is a detail I forgot to mention in my previous video. With the rematch not happening and Mayweather Sr. as trainer playing a huge role in developing the blueprint to beat Floyd in the rematch, I can only assume for the lead up for the Pacquiao fight, Team De La Hoya thought it was necessary to bring in Nacho Berestein as trainer because because he coached Pacquiao's rival Juan Manuel Marquez, the man who gave Manny a lot of trouble and some say he may have won the rematch earlier that spring. With Mayweather Sr. free of major training duties for the year of 08, Ricky Hatton appointed Mayweather Sr. as coach in September alongside the announcement that he will be defending his title against former champion Pauli Malignaggi. Pauli made his fifth defense of his IBF Junior Welterweight title against Love Morendo in a rematch on the Hatton Lascano card. This was pretty much supposed to be a setup fight with the two. Unfortunately, Paulie had to give up his IVF title to fight Hatton. When Hatton entered camp, his skills at the mitts were awful, completely reckless. The name of the game is hit and don't be hit. That's the name of the game. Ricky was just brutal, very aggressive, overly aggressive to me. To tell you the truth, he almost put me down in the gym when we first started because he really didn't know how to even hit pads. Mayweather Sr. had his hands full to prepare Hatton for his toughest opponent since the Mayweather Jr. fight. Not only Sr. had fulfilled his duties, and then some, improving Hatton's coordination, defense, and just overall technique. It was all out in full display against Pauli Malignaggi, completely dominating Pauli through the whole fight. Hatton stopping Malignaggi in the 11th round to successfully defend the junior welterweight title five times. The Hitman is back, and the boxing media was in absolute awe of the brilliant job Mayweather Sr. did in preparing Hatton for the fight. Meanwhile, just two weeks later, Manny Pacquiao upsets Oscar De La Hoya. The fight between him and Pacquiao was mentioned as one of his future options, and coincidentally, Hatton was in attendance for this fight. De La Hoya vs. Pacquiao was a fight that no one expected to happen. Many feared for Manny's safety to where a Filipino congressman tried preventing this fight from happening, worried about Pacquiao's safety to end up defying the odds. When Manny came back from beating Barrera, it was a nice size welcome. Eric Morales, it was a little big. Marquez, eh, the same. De La Hoya was on another atmosphere. Hundreds and thousands of Filipinos came out to give Pacquiao a warm hero's welcome. Pacquiao's popularity had risen higher than no one else. 
when his newborn child was receiving a christening shortly after the fight, it was a major public event with many attending from celebrities, politicians, and the vice president of the Philippines at that time, Noli de Castro. The king is dead, at least the king of box office in boxing. And uh, the new king is here. I don't know if Americans will respond to Manny Pacquiao the way they have to Oscar De La Hoya. He had a great career, an unusual career. Um, and we have to move on to whatever is next. Coming into 2009, with the retirement of Oscar De La Hoya earlier in 08, the heir that was supposed to take De La Hoya's place in boxing to bring in large numbers retired as well. HBO didn't have a choice to put all eggs in the basket, taking the risk to push Manny's next fight and make him into a pay-per-view star. The question is, is a casual American boxing fan invested into watching an Asian fighter? Top Rank and HBO needed the right guy to compliment Pacquiao to bring him more into the mainstream public in American sports. And that person was Ricky Hatton, who just came off his brilliant performance against Paul Nalanchi. Not only this was a matchup which will determine Ring Magazine Fight of the Year, but also the Trainer of the Year. In December 2008, Aram and Richard Schaefer agreed to a 50-50 purse split deal for the fight, but Pacquiao did not like the deal and wanted the lion's share. He wanted a 55% split. Hatton's people did not agree on. Pacquiao went down just a smidge, 52-48 purse split. Hatton finally caved in and the fight was finalized and announced on January January 23rd, 2009. Pacquiao receiving a guaranteed $12 million, Hatton $8 million. A fight of this magnitude will be the first fight in America where an Asian fighter is a main headline, given the fact that it's titled Pacquiao vs. Hatton and not the other way around. Immediately once the fight was announced, both fighters went on a massive press tour, touring in America accompanied by Hollywood stars and all the way to the UK, Mayweather Sr. and Freddie Roach being the absolute highlight of the press conferences putting on a great show, amazing promotion from both sides. There was not one dull moment. Mayweather Sr. being quite entertaining with a nice Rudy Ray Moore styled monologue. I really enjoyed that personally. Oscar De La Hoya, he was over the hill. Now it's time for you to swallow the same pill. So get your tickets now, people, and let's make it clear that the Pac-Man woman is almost here. To end off the press tour, Hatton and Pacquiao went to a Manchester pub where the two had in a competitive dart match. For Team Pacquiao, former heavyweight champion Michael Moore was brought in to be the assistant trainer. Try to be careful coming with the right hook because your head's coming with it. So, I'm gonna stop you right yeah. here. Yeah, because I wouldn't have said that. But, it, but if, he, if, he's, if I'm here, he's coming if I'm here, pow, pow, boom. Now stop, boom, boom. I can come he's right here. Or I can come with a hook too because I'm coming, coming, coming on the inside. inside. Right. See it? In the Hatton camp, HBO 24-7 brings in a more in-depth look at Hatton's progression alongside Floyd Sr.'s tutelage, and he was looking amazingly sharp. This the real, real racehorse right here. Fairly the joke, Coach Roach got a mule. This right here, this is an Italian I stay. That's that. I'm running fast and hard. They ain't gonna be able to stand up under that. Since I do not have episode 3 and 4, we'll be fast forwarding this to the weigh in. Sold out crowd in the thousands filled the MGM Grand. The Hatton Army is in full effect throughout the whole week and at the weigh in itself, making their presence known as they filled up the venue with a band playing music followed up with Hatton chants. Besides Mayweather Hatton, this fight's weigh in possibly had the highest attendance. Both guys came in amazing shape. Pacquiao was the first to come up on the scale weighing at 138 pounds. Hatton came in right on the dot of 140 pounds. The first time in its life of 24-7, they did a post weigh-in series 
called 24-7 Overtime. Since this fight was the battle of trainers, they got both Freddie Roach and Mayweather Sr. out in the ring, where Manny and Hatton will be fighting the next day for a little 10 minute Q&A. The final two minutes were Jim Lampley, who's moderating the video, let both guys have their final words with each other. And we got some entertainment here. Man, we've never been I friends. We've known each other a long time. He disrespects me for every day. He calls me cockroach. So why would I be his friend? What is he? Is he? He's so disrespectful. I think it's the, the Floyd show. It's not. It's the Ricky Hatton Pacquiao show. Well, it can be uh, Ricky Hatton. All I hear is me, me, me. These guys are going at it, talking about the past, how things are going to go tomorrow, and their antics during the 24-7 series. Pacquiao Man, beats Oscar any day of the week. If he had you in the corner or anyone in the corner, we kick his ass. B.S. Jim is just letting things be, not interrupting at all, till he was forced to step in and do his promotional plug-in for the event. He paid you less than I asked him for. He did. He paid you less than I asked him I for. Welcome back, friends, to the show that wrong. never you ends. Got, you, you got All three hundred episodes of 24 7 still available on HBO On Demand. I was looking for two million. HBO paper did. Me too. Cameras kept rolling because both guys were hilariously roasting each other. I don't think... There has been a fight where I myself was emotionally invested, not only because of the fighters, but also the trainers as well. It was a fine rivalry taking place. Thank no. you, guys. You're an old man. Who well, you know, Freddy, you're an old man. I know. <laughs> you, you, I know. Freddy's still mic'd up. First of all, you do soft. Three times. So you soft for what? For, you, for what? Above you gonna be soft that night. What is that get to do with? Be somewhere. You know what? Because when Pacquiao gets up to him fights, I sit down. I don't have to be fucking hard. <laughs> Jesus Christ! But well, guess what? Jesus. 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 Fred! 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 Thanks to a grand promotion. All the stars came out for the show. Jay-Z, Son Diddy Combs, Denzel Washington, Cedric the Tainer, and the legendary Jack Nicholson. A big fight fan who has literally attended every big title and non-title fight from the past 40 plus years. The Filipino national anthem was sung by multi-platinum selling artist Martin Niavira. After that, Great Britain's national anthem was sung by the legend Sir Tom Jones. In a very rare sight during this event, Americans usually remain silent during the national anthems and begin to cheer towards the pause before the final lines. But this fight was attended by majority UK fans, and they all sung along with Tom Jones. Send her happy and glorious. Fight day waits. Pacquiao weighed in at 148 pounds, and Hatton came in at 152 pounds. Though Hatton is the champion, and he has every right to walk second, Hatton chose to be the first to do his ring walk. Hatton stating that Manny is number one pound for pound, and he's a challenger for the number one spot, despite this fight being for the legitimate junior welterweight title that he holds. Hatton's ring walk was quite speedy, and the selection of music completely threw off his fans. They were ready for Blue Moon, and the Hatton anthem comes on. Pacquiao makes his entrance, accompanied by WWE superstar David Michael Batista. During the face-off, the size difference is not as evident like it was with the Del Hoya fight, but Pacquiao is still the smaller man. And when I say you must obey, good luck, touch up. All right. Round one, Hatton immediately gets in the inside of Pacquiao at the start of the bell and will land a punch to the body and head inside the clinch. Shortly after that, Pacquiao times Hatton on his jab to land a counter right hook. First clean effective punch of the fight. Hatton having some success early on the inside, getting shots in with his free hand on Manny. Pacquiao will land a right hand as Hatton is rushing in. Hatton was able to avoid Pacquiao's jab and come in with something of his own, but Pacquiao is just too quick and was able to avoid Hatton's counter. Hatton will get some shots in on Manny's body on the ropes, but it was ineffective. Hatton reverting to his old self and forgetting what Floyd Sr. taught him, rushes in with no head movement just to get countered by Pacquiao again. So far, Pacquiao is way ahead in the round. Pacquiao finding a lot of success with the right hook early, and at the 1 minute 48 marker, this time it has an effect on Hatton. Hatton taking a punch 
to try and land one. It is absolutely the last thing Floyd Sr. wanted him to do. Hatton rushes in, thinking he can cover the short distance on time to engage in a clinch and begin working in on the inside, and he didn't realize Manny was too fast for him and landed a big right hand just before he gets in. This would have worked against any other fighter at that time, but obviously not on Manny. Manny will land a beautifully timed right hook at the 1 minute 7 marker to follow up and land the first 1-2 of the fight then to follow up and knock down Hatton. Well, follows the jab with a hook, comes back with another jab. There's the straight left hand, and he landed it right on Hatton's chin. And down goes Hatton after he swings and misses with a left hook. And that's a knockdown for Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao will finish the round off huge, landing at will, then to drop Hatton for the second time to close the round off. Pacquiao is coming out of the neutral corner in a hurry, lands another right hook. Another perfect right hand for Pacquiao. Another right hook. Straight left hand. Pacquiao's landing at Will. Hard left hand. Hatton has to hold on. Will Hatton make it out of the round? He's down for the second time. This is the brilliance of the Filipino slugger. Mayweather Sr. in the corner pretty much tells Hatton what he should have been doing from the start of the fight. Absolutely no head movement, no tight guard, no fainting, no faking the jab. He wasn't doing anything that he did in his previous fight. Before it cut to the replay of the knockdown, Floyd Sr. will end it off saying, you should have been listening to this since day one. You have a fighter on one page and the trainer on the other. Hatton thinks he can win the fight trying to rough up Manny and Floyd wants him to box, set up traps and make his way into the inside without getting hit and get what he can in before the break. Hatton comes out in the second doing absolutely nothing what Floyd instructed in the corner and Manny will just completely tear through him in the first half. Stunned Hatton and knocked him back. Look at the brilliant accuracy of Manny Pacquiao landing with both right and left hands. Hatton would get some shots in as he's in the clinch, but it's not effective at all because Manny knows that's all he's going to do. At the one minute marker, Hatton will actually use the feint and throw a leaping left hook, which would hit its mark way before Pacquiao could get off his right hook. You see what timing does and how it can disrupt things? Falling after Hatton landing the hook, Hatton was able to pound away with one free hand, then to get the other hand free to where he was able to set up his first effective punch of the fight which was a brilliant uppercut. Pacquiao did not like that at all and the Pacquiao we all know is going to try and one up Hatton and follow it up with a barrage of shots. Pacquiao. Pacquiao's blinding speed that sets him apart. As well as his head movement. His head movement is a phenomenal. With the huge lack of head movement, hands are not up, it was a matter of time where Pacquiao can actually land his left hand. And once Hatton backed off just a bit and Pacquiao knew he was within range, that was all she wrote. An absolutely cracking shot to Floyd. Manny is now the champion in his sixth weight class. The total punches of this fight, Manny would throw 127 and land 73 at a crazy 57%. Hatton will throw 78 and land 18 at 23%. This is a brilliant clip shot by a Manila based photographer by the name of John Havilena of the reaction of Manny knocking out Hatton. This was a free live screening of the fight held in a gymnasium in Tondo, Manila, Philippines. Link to his page will be in the description. HBO and Top Rank took the red pill, rolled the dice with this event, and it turned out to be a major success, proving this can attract the casual fans who make a fair share of the sales to invest in watching a fighter from Asia, and also proving that the Filipino-American boxing community is just as supportive or equal to the Mexican and Mexican-American boxing community, in which the network, investors, and sponsors are much more willing to invest for whoever Pacquiao is fighting next and more Filipino fighters to come fight in the States. This fight generated 850,000 pay-per-view buys, $50 million in pay-per-view revenue. In the UK, it earned 900,000 pay-per-view buys, 
So in total, between America and the UK, it generated 1.75 million. Freddie Roach will be rewarded Trainer of the Year, Manny will be awarded Knockout of the Year, and Fighter of the Year. He will also be awarded an SB for Fighter of the Year as well. In conclusion to the HBO broadcast of this fight, the main talk was, what is next for Manny? A third fight with Juan Manuel Marquez or a fight with Floyd Mayweather Jr.? Mayweather just announced that he will be coming out of retirement and he will be fighting pound for pound number two ranked Juan Manuel Marquez in July. The events that will take place in the following four months will completely change the shape of boxing. Till then, stay tuned for the next episode. This is a tale of Manny Pacquiao versus Ricky Hatton. Be sure to like, share, and if you're new, subscribe. Subscribe to my Patreon for early access. Shout out to my patrons for supporting this project and making this happen. I'm Alfa Sancho, and I'm out.